Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Lauren. And I'm Ian. And we are week three of six That's towards right. our goal of Halfway 100 there. kettlebell. So like 10 of these. 10. 100 kettlebell swings. Nice. Today we'll progress our skills that we've been working on the past two weeks, including the deadlift, the hinge, the hike passes, and all those little nuances of the two-handed kettlebell swing. But until then, we'll start with a body weight get up, add some light loads in to get strong, and then stay tuned for our swinging session. We have 30 minutes. The clock starts now. Let's go. We'll be working that get up or rather a get down here as a mobility practice to highlight some of the do's, the don'ts, or the recommendations we have that are unique to the get up. Let's start with one hand in a rack position. In that rack position, either with that open hand or fist, knuckles or fingertips point to the ceiling, just very low effort, think armpit pulling down to get arm towards overhead. Now, if we can't achieve the beautiful lower in line there, arm in line with the bicep, rather bicep in line with the ear, maybe load isn't for you, but should practice that as we get into today's practice. Elevate the shoulder, meaning shrug up. We wanna avoid that with the kettlebell, so pull the arm down. Then the leg that we can touch, just step back into our high lunge or drop lunge stance. Let's take five, four, three, two, one second to bring it down. Now just practice this pull groove of pressing overhead back into this rack's position. We'll return to the arm in a second. From here, open the leg towards the side, then at the head, rotate over the knee and let the upper body or rib cage then follow. The next cue is our hinge as we push our hips back, place a hand on the floor, and then at the head, look to the floor here. This isn't part of the getup, but it's a nice mobility series nonetheless. With your nose locked in on your thumb, rotate through the rib cage and try to open that lateral facing knee to touch the back wall. Then look to the side wall or over your shoulder and then rotate through the torso. Press away, then square up your head back to center and then your torso. That's a nice windmill phase of the get up. Let's just do that again, but transition to the floor this time. So arm across the body and rotate the head. Then turn the shoulders. Incorporate the hip hinge, grip the floor, and then next to get to the ground, we sweep that leg. Shrug this shoulder just a little bit but press into the floor through the fingertips to depress that shoulder blade, aiming to create great stability at the shoulder. Then find our elbow and a little bit of a plank here as we'll go back for a second and then return to this position we're in. Press away from that arm, one 1,000, and then return to that nice tall stack. Repeat two seconds, one, two, and then stack. And repeat three, two, one, and back, that's right. And then four to the floor with no crash bang. One, two, three, and four. From this position, just roll over into a push-up or plank and press yourself to that high plank position. We could also modify from the knees. Pull the hands to the feet without moving and clench your bum cheeks and brace your core. Fill those gaps with high tension and then bend the knees and tip your tailbone to the ceiling and push the floor away and we'll stand up through your version of your hinge, which will come in through that kettlebell swing, very handy. We're back up, let's just shake it out and repeat on the other side. A rack position with a body weight arm and think armpit down as we extend that arm towards overhead. If we cannot hit that hallmark of an arm in line with the ear, maybe check in on the load you're using later. Elevate the shoulder and then we're gonna pull it down. Then that free leg that you can touch, drop back in a lunge and take five, Four, squeeze that back leg, butt cheek as you come down. Then just pull that hand to that rack position again, and then open the legs, so the knee faces, in my case, towards about 10 o'clock or two. And then at the head and neck, rotate the head, rotate the torso, hinge on the hip, place the hand on the floor, and then not part of the get up, but a nice rotation anyway, rotate the head to lock your nose in on your thumb on the floor, and then rotate into that and breathe. Then look over the shoulder to the side wall, rotate through the body next, and then press away. Let's just stay here this time, but hinge the hip again and return to the floor. This time we'll sweep that leg in that tall sits position and casually let that shoulder slump or shrug. Kettlebells avoid that now. And then we'll place our elbow on the floor and a one 1000 lever back and then stack. Repeat for two seconds. One, 
two, and stack, three seconds in back, two, one, and now four seconds to the floor, three, two, and down. Let's go back to that push-up style one last time from your knees or from your toes. And this time in our plank, highlight that X pattern tension. What I mean by that is, without moving, pull your right hand to your left foot. And then left foot to the right hand or whatever that other diagonal is for you. Can you do those independently as I try one more time? And then for five seconds, do them at the same time. Perhaps it's a series of quick Three, switches and quivers. Two, one. Then go tailbone ceiling. Walk the hands to those feet. Set up your unique hinge from the side. Mine would look something like that. And then push your hips through, finishing tall, and shake it out. Hmm. We have kettlebells, though. Should we use those? Yes, we Excellent. should pick up a kettlebell and practice. I didn't hear you whisper. <laughs> I didn't whisper. Oh, <laughs> you did. You went. Nope. I didn't mean to. Oh. Let's first practice a get up under a load, slow, then we'll hold our kettlebell in each place and then we'll do one more get up nice and fluid. Excellent. So grab a bell and let's start on the floor with it. Lying down in our cuddle position. I'm going to tell you when to move in this get up. If you're not familiar with the get up body weight addition, I suggest you practice that, which means no kettlebell. If you're ready to add that load, let's go through the cuddle to the roll, to the two-handed press. Right here, we have a nice straight wrist. Our opposite leg is extended about 45 degrees and that arm is in that same plane. Next, use your foot to push into the floor. Drive your hip, pull to your elbow, hold. We stay here for a second thinking that that bottom shoulder's packed and our wrist holding the bell is nice and straight. Push into the floor, squish the bug. That means those fingers will rotate backwards where elbow's nice and straight, shoulders pull out of our ear. Next, we'll lift our hips and we'll sweep the leg underneath of us. Hold. Right now, we should have two arms stacked on top of each other with our shoulders in between. Then pressing the floor away, extending the hip through. The front foot will move to square up that lunge. Use both legs, pushing into the floor forward and back to stand. Hold for a second. Now, let's go back down, just as we warmed up with. Step back lunge. Control the descent. Front foot will open. Underneath that bell, we rotate and we hinge, hand finds the floor. Stay here, stack those shoulders. Next, sweep through, hold, three, two, find your elbow, hold, three, two, press away from your elbow to your back, hold, two hands on, pull the bell down, return it to a cuddle, let it go, spin yourself around the bell, and we'll repeat that same drill on the other side. You did choose that 20, didn't you? I Holy. did. Holy. Time under tension. A little bit of practice installing here in each move just to make sure our body positioning is perfect as we go through the get up. So take your time. Cuddle, roll, two hand and press, hold. Get your setup just right. Nice straight wrist, straight elbow. Pull on the elbow using that hip extension and hold. Lifting the ribs away from the floor, keeping the shoulder packed. Push into the floor, squishing the bug. Fingers will face backwards, the elbow will be nice and straight and shoulders retracted. Push into the floor, lifting the hips, sweeping the knee underneath you. Wrist, elbow, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, wrist, nice and stacked. Press the floor away. Front foot moves, square up, hold that lunge for a second. Now push on the wrist, backwards on the floor to stand up. As we come back down, we'll take that step back and control the descent. That bell and hinge, restacking the shoulders over top of that bottom wrist, sweeping the leg through, and then finding the elbow, and then slowly pressing away from the elbow to the back. Pull the bell down with two hands, return it to that cuddle position, and let's stand up however we'd like. Try not to use your hands. Whew. Nice. Excellent. Next, we'll work on some heavy holds. Excellent. Let's work on that cheek clean heavy hold and replicate those plank tensions that we practice from the floor and are very important for that top phase of our swing. To do that, we'll stand right over top of the bell and the handle is perpendicular or across ways from my feet. And let's start implementing that hinge. Pack your shoulders, mostly vertical shins, slightly turned out feet. Lauren's shape is great, but it's her shape. What's yours? Find a safe place to be. 
From this, pretend to lift, that's the preload, and then lift and catch in the goblet position. Adjust your stance if you wish, and just like I saw the corner of my eye, Lauren brought that rib cage down to the hips, pushing the feet away from center, maintaining your breath, and as a maybe, look through that window, breathe under the shield, pull to the body, and return to the floor, and come up. Let's just pattern one phase of where that shows up in our swing pattern. Stand in your swing stance, arms down low. Very calmly raise those arms to the front. Cues in this phase of the swing include keeping your shoulder blades together and your rib cage down. Maybe even give yourself a little test on those abs. Now hold that incredible plank tension just like you did with a kettlebell as the hands come down to the hips, then hinge on the hips pressing the hands back, and one more time, stand up, squeeze your butt cheeks, that contributes to that kettlebell out front, and on the way down, hold that incredible plank tension, and then we continue swings from there, but just shake it out. To the floor, I think, for one more get up. Done to the heavy holds? I think we should hold it in our rack position once, because okay. later today, stay tuned, we're going to press the end of our workout here. So let's get used to that rack position, we'll do one more get up and then we'll start swinging. Over top of our bell, we will hinge as per usual, grip with one hand, cuddle with the second. Now, just like you're doing your winter coat, but using your hips, you'll hip drive and punch through that bell to find that rack position. You can have two hands on that bell or you can have one, but most importantly, you have a straight wrist. The bell is not pulling your wrist into that extension. Next, you have a vertical forearm and it's next to your chest. Your cheeks are squeezed, your core is braced as practiced in that plank or that goblet. And now let's pretend to press. Pretend for three, two, two hands on, hinge to place that bell down, up without. Shake, same thing, second side. Other hand grips first, second hand cuddles. Pull through, punch bell. Vertical forearm, nice straight wrist. Square up your hips, squeeze, brace. Now pretend to press for three, two, Two hands on, keep it tight to the body as you park it, and place it down. Good job. We'll do one more get up each side. Same load, heavier load, lighter load, up to you. But come on down to the floor, however you choose. As usual, we'll start that get up in the very important cuddle. So roll to your side, roll, and press that bell up. Finding that get up position, pull to the elbow. Find the hand squishing the bug. Bridge and sweep. Hand leaves floor, hips extend, front foot moves, both legs help you up. Leg you can touch will drop back. Step to open. Rotate, hinge, stacking. Sweep, elbow, and slowly to your back. Pull the bell down, return it to the cuddle, let it go. Spin around, repeat on the other side. Take your time. Get ups a little faster than last time, but it's not rushed. Cuddle, roll, and press. Hip drive, pull on elbow. Squish bug, find hand. Bridge, sweep. Hand leaves floor, square it up. We're looking forward when we lunge to tall. And then as we come back down, controlled, Step, rotate hinge, looking up at your bell. Sweep, find your elbow, slowly press away with control, pull the bell down, return it to the floor, and stand up with no hands. Oh. Now those stand ups are done, I can put my pony on. Done, maybe we'll even finish or so. Well. Maybe not though, we'll hang out for some presses as well. Presses is what we do on those Thursday classes with those bar plies. So if you're with us on Thursday, you're well prepared for the press coming up. And if not, stick to those basics. I'm sure we'll have some cues to share as well. The kettlebell swing. What the heck is that, Lauren? Show us five swings. Maybe just watch or do a nice little warm-up set yourself. But this, these rather, are the standards we like to hit in our kettlebell swing. Heavy feet, strong glutes, engaged abs, five or so, checking in. That's Lauren's swing. Here's my first set as well. All right. Take your time using that hinge. If you haven't 
fully perfected that swing, neither have we, so don't worry about that. But you can always go back to that get up or the other versions of yeah. lessons we've done in the past two weeks. Before we do a set, I was gonna do a different warm up set. Let's do three hike passes, three stop swings, followed by three continuous swings, and then we'll get into our I go, you go set here. So starting first with those hike passes, we're behind our bell, we'll hinge, tip bell, pull to the zipper of that hike position, and then park. Pull, park, think lats and hips here. Now this time, pull one full swing, and then through, park bell. Repeat two more. And park, one more time. And park. Next, three continuous swings. Pull, swing, 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 park. Oh, excellent. I like that as a little warm up, or a little ab cram, a little warm up before we get into our swings. But last two weeks, we've worked on those skills, and today we're aiming towards the number 50. As we're live on TV, and math is easy and hard, hard when you can't breathe, we'll get around 50. So what we're going to do is I go, you go. So either choose to swing with me or to swing with Ian, and you're resting on the offset. I'll start with five continuous. Five continuous swings. <clears throat> As Lauren will go through today's oh, practice, <coughs> making sure the frogs are out of the throats there. But through today's practice, Lauren will try to main, will maintain that standard of the kettlebell float at about chest height. If you're feeling your power is decreasing, be done. Be happy with your number you can achieve with power or lower that load and find that right load for you to complete your sets. So but here we go for here, five. Five swings. As we go through today too, maybe you keep the number five, you don't even dabble in the 10, that's also great. But no matter what you're doing, your hips are driving through. And let's also practice keeping that consistent breath through all 10 reps here. Consistent breath with the swingers are breathing in on the backswing and a hi-ya on the out or the up. Fill, fill your breath, more of a top-up strategy than a full depletion on every repetition. For those recovering, in slow, out slower, and stay loose. One of my favorite drills here, if you have a partner next to you, is at the top of that swing, you're punching them in the stomach, making sure they're keeping those abs braced. They have that turtle shell on the outside, and they're able to breathe underneath the abs. Nice, strong 10. We're coming back to a set of five here. Little wave. Five and 10 and five and 10, or feel free to create your own wave as well. Here we get 50, little modest volume like five, higher intensity like 10, and makes those sets of five feel like a breeze, we hope. All right, Team Lauren just finished a total of 20 swings. We're keeping a verbal tally so we don't miss any here. It's the hips that drive through that get that bell up there, no lifting. Mm, that's We're right. back up to a number 10. The rib cage is staying down as that kettlebell is going up. Earlier in the warm up, the elevated the shoulders is the shrug. Kettlebells are anti shrug exercises. Keep those armpits pulled down, avoid the shrug. Sometimes a heavy bell might fix that. So make sure, again, as Lauren said, we're not front raising that bell, but we're pressing it off the hips with the hips. As well as thinking about all those things. So, where is your head, neck in all of this? One of the Great activities is to set a little camera up on your side profile. Check yourself out. Are you retracted with a nice chin tuck or your blades coming forward and you have the chicken neck out there? Let's try to avoid that. Five. We're always at, already at 30 and a nice set of five here. Breath in nice and slow with me as you recover or tie it to your exertion with Lauren on those swings. That's about five. The rest comes around quick, but that's okay. It's only five this time. All right, getting up towards that 50, how are you feeling? Good, well, that's great. Really been working on your skills over the past week to get that endurance up. Nice. We hit 35 now, this will take us to 45. We train with kettlebells twice a week. Once in this more intense pursuit of our kettlebell swing with our get-ups and our presses, and once on that Thursday with our hip mobility for bar, but our full body tension with that press. Great tools for strength and endurance as I try to catch my breath here. Lauren's team, you're about done 10. 
which means we have 10. It'll take us to that 45 number, I believe. So staying loose in between your sets, shaking out your legs, shaking out that grip strength. We know you're holding that bell, so give that a little break. As well, trying to breathe in and out the nose. Slowing your breath down, that strong exhale. We just hit the number 45, which means five to get to 50. One more set. We want these last five to be as dedicated to that form and function as those first sets of five. Revisit the hike pass, revisit that stop swing, and help tighten up your kettlebell routine with cues like these for the swing. All right, last set of five here for Team Ian. Hips, drive through, holding that tall plank position, shoulders retracted, elbows straight, using the hinge every time. Let's close our mouth, hmm. open our nostrils, and take a nice breath in and out. Taking the time to actively slow down your breathing and recover will help you and your endurance in the future. Let's do it again. A nice inhale for four, three, two, hold your breath for four, three, two, exhale for four, three, two, inhale for four, hold for four, exhale four, hold empty for four, in for four, hold, exhale, hold empty, one more time, in, hold, exhale, last hold empty, and relax, breathe. See if your breathing come back. Could you have that conversation? Nice and normal. Nothing happened. Just nice and swings. normal, just a little. A little Checking groove. on the breath. There we go. So you said we should do another get up. Yeah, of course. So we should do another. Of course. Get up. Let's do a get up here together, and then if you're with us for a press, let's maybe stick around for one or two quick sets of a press. But first, as Lauren said, that get up, and there's lots of rules or lots of protocols to hit on the way up but coming down and just choose your nice pattern to get there. I'll cue this first side and then hand it to Lauren when the going gets tough on the second. Roll the back, two hand press, push off that hip, check, tall sit. That's the next phase. Then we sweep in that windmill, press away, and then square the head, the body, and the leg. Stand tall on two feet, pull yourself down, squeezing your back butt cheek, Open, hinge, sweep to tall sit, elbow, and to your back. And I rushed that one a little bit, got a little bit away from me. So as Lauren said, we're two trying to find our most perfect get up and perfect swing. So thank you for being with us as we explore. All right, one more get up today. Started in the cuddle and then we roll and we press to the elbow first. Keep off leg heavy. Find your hand, bridge and sweep. Pressing the whole way, moves. Now we step back, lunge, open, rotating and hinging, sweeping, pulling the elbow, pulling the bell down, returning it to the cuddle, and standing up again with no hands. Ooh, that was a nice squat. It might segue nicely into our in-between exercises here with the press. So earlier in the warm-up, we you prepared for that get-up, we held an arm in a rack position with me, and then Lauren loaded it with that kettlebell. The pressing action again is that overhead action, bicep in line with the ear, and our pull down. Let's try that for maybe a set of five. Choose a weight that you can confidently achieve that number with, and there's nothing wrong with using your bare hand or a little shoe or the lightest dumbbell as well but groove the pattern. Let's find some strength for at least one set each side. Maybe it's so nice. We'll do it twice. Two hands. Because it rocks. Uses that cuddle. Anything for a good rhyme. So I use those two hands and I pull it to the rack and I press one and I pull down. And I clench and I go two, breath in, down. Three, breath in. Four, and then one more time here. Five, pull the rack, return to the floor, 
go over your checklist. What went really well? Figure it out over time, high tension that press, little loosey goose in between, but now it's time to get back to the high tension as you press again. So it's the clean to the rack, full body tension, press one, two, sniff in down and hip, three up, hip, four, maybe you can tell I'm right handed, as that's a little harder on that side, but it's strong and stronger and repeating sets of five with good form will help us get to either more weight, more load, or just more reps for your strength. Lauren had a good squat. Maybe just cue us through that little bodyweight squat you had there. All right. Let's take ourselves down into a regular squat stance. So whatever regular feels like to you, toes like might be slightly out. Then before you go anywhere, think about pulling the floor together underneath you. So right now you can't tell, but I'm isometrically pulling my legs together and I feel those adductors. I'm gonna pull so much that I bring myself down into my squat. Once I'm here, my chest is extended or I have a pretty long spine, chest, heart forward. Knees are gently pushing out, but they're squeezing out from my butt cheeks. All 10 toes of mine are gripping the floor, the balls of my feet are down, the lateral borders of my feet, and I'm trying to engage those arches. As I push down and out on the floor, I'll extend my hips back up through. Let's do that again. Most people, when they come down to their squat, they just plop. We don't plop here. We pull ourselves down. So use the tension on the down using those hamstrings and adductors, and then push down and out on the floor, extending your hips all the way through. One last time, pull the floor together. You probably have to do less squats when you do them right. Push down and away to stand up, nice and tall. Ooh, shake it out, one more set of presses to finish yes. up here. Yes, are you in my camp where pressing is so nice, we'll do it that twice. If so, let's do it. Finish with a rep count that you could do one more of. Avoid failure, prioritize our strength here. I'm going for five, what about you? Sure. Excellent. Whatever like nine? Number. You just do one more of. <laughs> nine, you can do nine. I'm committed to five amazing reps here, Lauren. No, I might do eight. We'll you see. and your team. Eight or no, nine. five is good. Five is, enough. five is good for me for today. Whew. Pull it and press. Keep track of your own reps here and maintain that full body tension and look out on the horizon or slightly up. Breath in. And that's my five if I can keep count. And I just get to marvel at Lauren's lifts there as we finish. In between, shake it out, catch your breath. Let's repeat that one last time. Same number, strong side and stronger side. Here we go. That's a clean and a press. Full body tension, two, three. One more. Little funny sounds there, I apologize. And then we park it and we shake. Excellent. Well, as we finish up week three, we should just hang out in our squat again. Ooh, sounds fun. So come on down. Hanging out here, spending some time lifting your chest, taking those nice breaths. It was week three this week. We did 50 swings, plus or minus some warm-ups. Those don't really count, but they do for practice. We did some presses. We worked on our heavy holds, as well as those get-ups, all in a mere 30 minutes. Doesn't take long to get your kettlebell practice in. Join us next week, week four. We add some more reps and we're ultimately working to those 100 swings. On Thursday, as mentioned, we have our bar class where we practice our hip mobility to increase and get better squats. So join us at the bar as well as with a bell where we'll press some more there. Until next time, check out our website, check out our Patreon, like, subscribe, and take care. Stay strong. And we'll train soon. Train soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.